Hi everyone, Royal Shrivov here. Here's a short tidbit about uh, why I think that mock and also Rhino mocks are framework isolation frameworks in .NET that belong to the past. They don't really present the future to me. Now that doesn't mean they don't they cannot be a part of the future. Well, maybe Rhino mocks could be because it's kind of unmaintained by Orin Ainey now. Uh, but mock is well maintained, but I don't think it's going in a direction where the future should lead us and also definitely not where the newer frameworks are leading us. And there are some important directions that I think isolation frameworks need to go through in .NET and elsewhere uh, that are a part of a good future, a future about tests. Um, so I have four basic ideas about this. I think that the future of isolation frameworks is about usability. Uh, what the newer frameworks such as um, Fake It Easy and N -substitute, Substitute do is they have really good attention to error messages. So the usability of what happens when something fails uh, they they uh, they don't waste the programmer's time in understanding what happened. They give the programmer as much information information as possible. Um, frameworks like Mock, MOQ, uh, and, and Rhino Mocks, they give horrible error messages usually. Um, and I know how easy it is to give horrible error messages. Um, I changed the whole idea of error messages in the Type Mock Isolator to make them more usable. And I think that's the future, and that's the right future for isolation frameworks. Because unit tests with, with mocks and stubs are hard enough as it is. Uh, another thing that I think the future of isolation is, which mock isn't, is about testing a single concern. A lot of the tests that we used to write, and we used to learn this as well, and I remember myself doing it, is to um, use uh, uh, the framework to fake multiple methods and then just verify all of them. I used to even actually have uh, a teardown method uh, uh, at, at, at the class level, which would just verify everything. It doesn't even really matter what. Um, everything that was faked in, in a test. So every method that was faked was also a method that you would verify that it was called. And this led to very fragile, very unmaintainable tests. And this is one thing that I think that we should uh, go against. Tests should be testing a single concern and not be over-specified. Over-specification is the work of the devil, basically, because your test will scream at you every time you change something later in the code, which doesn't really matter for the end result. The end result is still okay, but uh, an internal method it gets called twice more, and so suddenly your test fails because you didn't tell it that that's what's going to happen. So over-specification is very prevalent and very easy to do with a framework like MOQ uh, because it has the dot verifiable on, on many methods and it has methods like verify all expectations. Rhinomox has that as well. And things like fake it easy and um, and substitute, they by default don't have that. Uh, I, th I haven't seen the ability to do that and probably is there at some point in fake it easy at least but I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't even exist in end substitute. And I think that's the future. The future should should disallow this by default and you have to you should need to work really hard to make something like this happen because it's really bad for maintainability and usability. The third point is that I think the future is a is, is a more robust maintainable test, uh, a more cross cutting concern uh, relating to fakes. What do I mean? Uh, uh, in fake it easy, uh, there is this idea where you can say uh, fake any method that returns um, a specific type, and that's a cross-cutting concern. It, you by basically you 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 have a really thick brush where you say you see all these things. I don't care about them during this test. That's really important. Um, and usually by default you have you fake a class and everything is fake by default. But here you can you can fake selectively a bunch of things and you don't care about them and then you can do it in a single line. And what's cool about this is that if, if another method gets added to that selection, then by default 
that method will get added to the test. You don't have to add another line to the test in the future if you suddenly have a new method that returns a specific type. Now I know that some of this exists with a, like a select clause in MLQ, but that's just horrible, unreadable API to me. And things like n substitute uh, and fake it easy, their API is so simple that you can just do this pretty easily, at least with fake it easy. I haven't seen that in n substitute. Uh, and I've also, in Type Monk Isolator, you can also do a cross cutting concern almost in an AOP manner and selecting all uh, the methods or all the static methods on a type and just fake them out. And so that test will later also include new static methods if, you, if you've created them and you won't have to add them to the test as well. This is very future proofing your test because uh, imagine that your tests have to last 10 years with the application's code at least. And finally, I think the future in isolation frameworks is simplicity. And mock is not as simple as things like n substitute and fake it easy. Mainly because you have to create two objects. You have to create a controller, which is the mock of t, and you have to create the, the actual fake. And in the other frameworks, you, you don't have to create a controller. Everything is either in line with a, a single point of entry, such as in fake it easy, or it's all in the extension methods, which are an object. So you have uh, you have the ability to to change the behavior of something, but you don't have to have a controller to do it. And that makes the test, I think, more readable and much simpler to do because you don't have to work with two um, two objects at the same time. Uh, another thing is, for example, and substitute doesn't even require you to have any lambda expressions, and uh, that's a nice feature to have people still have trouble with lambda expressions and they make the test so unreadable. And here with something like n substitute, you just say something dot received, and then you would just call the methods as if, as if it's a regular object, but there is no lambda expression right there. And that's quite beautiful to me. So the future is simplicity. Um, um, one last point actually that I just remembered is that I think that the future is less confusing. Um, in, in the newer frameworks, fake it easy and substitute there is no there is no word called mock or stub in the API um, and I think that's good because uh, the idea the word mock has been overused and abused in most of the isolation frameworks to the point where it's just lost any meaning and so even when people want to use stubs they just think that they're creating mocks and so in, it creates a lot of confusion over what you're actually doing now it's it's easy to know if you have a mock object. If you verify against it, it's a mock object. Otherwise, it's not. So just give me a fake something, a substitute something, and be done with it. And I think that's something that the newer frameworks get is that the user doesn't care about those little intricacies. They just want to get something fake, maybe change the behavior, or maybe verify against it. But it has to be usable. It has to give good error messages. Now. Um, Back to the error messages bit, uh, I've been teaching my TDD course for over seven years now, and I've been teaching it with mock for at least two or three uh, of them, and I've seen people use mock MOQ with, with anger almost, um, in many, many situations. The error messages have always been bad, and there was no, and I haven't seen any tr attempt to try to make things better. Now, yes, someone will say, oh, just submit, submit a patch. Um, but you know what I think that should be implied in the basic creation of the framework that usability is key and that's something that I think that the newer frameworks get is that usability they start with usability in hand I think and substitute already says it's actually one of its most suited features it's actually on the website it says really good clear error messages um, and I think that's really really important so in that sense it's not that mock isn't widely used but I think it represents a lot of the notions that we used to hold in the past about how to do tests. And a lot of the newer frameworks, they don't hold these assumptions, so they can go and explore new ways of doing things without feeling bad about it, without trying to keep compatibility about something. Now, Mock used to be one of those frameworks. Mock was the first one to, if I don't, if I remember correctly, to actually create that idea of um, of uh, um, 
reflection that doesn't need strings by using delegates and, uh, and later lambda expressions. Um, or was it Ryan Rocks? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was mock. Um, and everyone caught on. And then, you know, uh, other things is that recursive fakes were created in uh, type mock isolator, and then later uh, uh, um, MOQ and RhinoMox also adopted that. So every firmware gets to be the new thing uh, in terms of creating new ideas and bringing them to the community. And today I think that mock doesn't bring a lot of new ideas, it just has a lot of, uh, I'm gonna call it lambda masturbation, really, uh, to to create something that looks like a new feature, but it's not about usability, it's not about simplicity, it actually becomes much more complicated. And uh, that's one of the things that I like about and substitute and fake it easy. Nothing is too complicated. Um, everything is kind of easy. Okay, uh, hope to hear from you about this, and hopefully it's not too much of a trolling kind of a thing.